Welcome to the Improve and Have Fun podcast. My name is Paul V. Perez, and on this podcast, I work on improving myself while having fun along the way, and I do so by documenting my life and interests. I just got home from watching Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and I enjoyed it. It was definitely a lot of fun, but I did have some issues with it. I saw somewhere in passing on one of the websites I visit on a daily basis that this is a Sam Raimi movie. And like somebody posted that on Twitter. And this is definitely a Sam Raimi movie in the sense of the little comedy bits, in the sense of definitely the camera things. Like if you've seen some of his past films like Evil Dead or Army of Darkness, you see like the funny things and like kind of like the funny jokes or even like the, some of the Spider-Man movies. And some of the camera tricks that he uses. And that just brought a smile to my face. Another thing I enjoyed is like sometimes in some of the comedy bits, I could see like a guitar riff and that just really made me laugh. The acting was fantastic. I thought the cast was great. Uh, All the returning cast, you know, of course, Benedict Cumberbatch, Benedict Wong, Rachel McAdams. Um, And this is a spoiler review, so I'm going to get into some spoilers. I definitely clapped at the Illuminati moment in the movie when you got... Uh, John Krasinski's Mr. Fantastic, who was for a long time rumored to actually be the actual Mr. Fantastic. Hopefully, he'll be Mr. Fantastic in the upcoming movie. Maybe, maybe not. When you got a Professor X uh, from the X-Men universe, which is super cool in that, in that Illuminati scene. Also, Black Bolt. Uh, that was really cool. Uh, then you got uh, Captain Carter from the What If cartoon series that was on Disney+, Plus, which I rewatched in preparation to... Uh, see Doctor Strange and I, out of the Disney Plus shows like I really enjoyed that I, I, like, and I've even seen some of the episodes more than twice so the What If series very very good like just what going back to it now a lot of the Disney Plus stuff is just okay to me it's not great What If and so far Loki have been two that I've really enjoyed and, and Moon Knight that just wrapped up I, I enjoyed Moon Knight as well but I, I don't feel like an urge to go back and watch it yet I'm a little bit all over the place uh, with this review. One of the things that is similar to Moon Knight that I didn't like, that I didn't like in this movie, is how anything can be presented to be anything. And then one as the viewer is like, uh, okay, yeah, I will accept it. Concepts in Doctor Strange, like uh, Wanda finding her throne in Wonder Gore. I've heard of Wonder Gore before, but definitely want to do some more research on what Wonder Gore is. Also, the souls of the dam just coming out of nowhere and being a part of the third act. And Moon Knight, to me, had a very similar issue where, like I said, anything is introduced and the viewer is just supposed to kind of accept it. Okay, uh, yeah, this uh, magical tube of toothpaste it go, it go can go ahead and stop anyone dead in their tracks. And then the viewer is like, uh, okay. And a lot of these movies... These kinds of concepts and ideas are presented, but I don't know. I I don't know for some reason why I just had a problem with it in this one, in this film. And the movie definitely plays very heavy into the horror, which you don't think when you're watching this from the very beginning. But it really gets into some like thriller, chase, like... uh, uh, cremation of people uh like uh, just burning people alive not that they're like uh writhing in pain or nothing but and then there's like a really chasing and like you see even the what if uh version of wanda in this for a quick brief moment so there's definitely some some real horror elements in here and things that i think can scare little children i.e don't know if this is good for little kids, this Doctor Strange movie, because uh, like I said, there's some, definitely some things, some hard horror things, not like guts spilling out or anything like that, but um, I would say flash, like horror flashes, like, you know, you get like, like I said, the moment of the Wanda zombie when she's chasing after, when Wanda, because Wanda is the big bad in this movie, when she's chasing after Doctor Strange, and and the, and the Rachel McAdams character, and also uh, America Chavez, who was great. I, I really enjoyed her as well. Uh, her first name, the actress's name is Zochil or something like that. I, I do not know how it said correctly, but she was fun. She was a lot of fun. I look forward to a future Young Avengers movie when you know we have Miss Marvel and we have a uh, uh, we have America Chavez and any other. Um, 
characters that are introduced. I think Ironheart is coming out with her own Disney Plus show. So these young next uh, next uh, wave of of uh, Marvel characters. Uh, so it'll be exciting to see them team up later. I, I know I, I'm a big fan of Grace Randolph, and she talks about that she in the rumor mill how they're talking about making a Young Avengers movie. This movie was a lot of fun. I definitely want to see it again. I don't know if I'll see it again in theaters. A lot of movies I don't see a, a second time in theaters. It has to be something like an experience, right? And speaking of which, you know, we got the Avatar uh, trailer in front of this movie and how it's not going to be released online for a few weeks. It was released in CinemaCon originally. Got wasn't going to be. It was going to be in front of this movie. It looks fantastic, and that's an experience movie where I went to go see it multiple times because it's like to the three D was like next level for that movie. Yeah, I wait until this comes onto Disney Plus. I think it's going to come onto Disney Plus in a forty five day window, similar to how Batman came onto HBO Max. But uh, this movie was a lot of fun. My issue, like I said, was just how so many different concepts were introduced. And this movie similar to Moon Knight, stuffs a lot into it, and it just, it's very fast. There were moments that I, I got a little emotional. I i, I think the uh, America Chavez is an origin story. Also, Doctor Strange uh, kind of connecting with another multiverse is uh, Rachel McAdams' character, Christine, and how that's just a theme, like in the What If cartoon, in the movies, how Christine is just such a integral part of his life, and like he has like this love for this woman, but then at the end of this movie, you get introduced to another character that, from the comics in the Doctor Strange universe, is become becomes a love interest in uh, herself. Uh, those moments were great, and those were moments where, like I said, my biggest complaint in the movie, there was a lot of time invested into making these moments work. And in the case of America Chavez, where her um, origin story is revealed very quickly, and like I said, I felt something. From when she first appears on screen, and as she's like kind of um, connecting with the different mul Doctor Stranges, and and you're just kind of like hearing how she is. Like there's a, a kind of like an instant bond, like uh, to uh, her her youth, like kind of like a, a reflection of like, yeah, I was kind of like that when I was young, younger, in a sense of uh, not ha kind of having like filters and just kind of like talking with the adults, uh, a little bit smart alecky. And I was, I enjoyed that, you know, but like I said, when they introduce all these different concepts that we as a you know audience are just supposed to eat and like just continue with the story, it just kind of, it doesn't feel earned. It doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't feel earned. It doesn't feel fully developed. And it just feels like, you know, the, the audience, we can throw anything at them and they'll just eat it up. And I don't think that that's the case I, in my in my situation. Don't just throw anything at me because it just feels like, uh, okay, we hit like a roadblock in the storytelling and let me just pull this thing out of nowhere so that we can just kind of continue with the story with it making some kind of sense. The movie, like I said, is super... I, the reason why I want to see it again, I want to see it with subtitles so I can just understand everything that's going on. And I understood, I, bet I would say, 95% of what's going on. But um, I'm sure that when I see it again with subtitles on, on Disney+, Plus, that uh, I'll, I'll get even more out of it. Definitely. Um, but really enjoyed this. Really enjoyed all the Sam Raimi camera tricks and all those little jokes and of Bruce Campbell cameo in this movie as well. I really, really enjoyed it. It made me smile. You know, it just brought me back to my youth of seeing Evil Dead and Army of Darkness. And I, like, I'm being just a big fan of those movies. Um, it's funny because now I'm right now I'm reading um, on Comixology, uh, Reanimator versus uh, Army of Darkness. This movie was fun. It's not the best Marvel movie. Uh, it's not a bad Marvel movie either. Um, but it was good. It was good. And definitely more in the horror. If Marvel's making kind of like a horror wing, this is definitely more. This is definitely in that. There's been, like I said, I, I follow Grace Randolph. I follow John Campia. These are two movie critics. And I know definitely Grace Randolph has talked about that Marvel is working on establishing Marvel you know, films, Marvel comics, Marvel, not Marvel comics, but Marvel in the film kind of um, arena is trying to develop a horror section where Werewolf by Night, I think, has been announced. Uh, you know, we just had Moon Knight that it didn't really have, it had 
some slight like horror elements, not heavy, but it, you know. And we're also gonna get uh, now Blade as well, um, Mahershala Ali. I think I said his name correct. Who's gonna be Blade? And this is all playing into like a horror kind of section of the MCU. And this movie's super in that section. This particular movie. Previous podcast guests Jason G, David, and Mark saw the movie separately. We couldn't see it together due to scheduling, but they recorded their own audio, which I'm happy to include. And I value these gentlemen's opinions because a lot of times they are different than mine. Sometimes I don't agree with what they say, but it's still so interesting to hear what different viewpoints these gentlemen have because they might be seeing something that I'm not seeing. So let's go ahead and get into that. And also Mark has a little bit extra to add that happened after he, Jason, uh, and uh, David dispersed. Let's get into that right now. All right, so we're going to make this recording right after we saw Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Magnitude. No, <laughs> what's the name of it? <laughs> Doctor Strange and the Multiverse? And the Multiverse? I, yeah, I don't know the title. Anyway. The multiverse of Universe. <clears throat> we'll look it up. <clears throat> anyway, uh, let's take a look. First, let's go first round. What do you think of the movie? Mark? You know, this movie was not what I expected. What the, did you expect? I expected, I expected a lot more action. I thought Spider-Man actually would have tied in somehow into this movie, but I guess we he did not make. Oh, I don't want to. Are there spoilers? There are spoilers here. There's yeah, just, no problem. With spoilers. Spider-Man does not make an appearance in this movie. Doctor Strange, I have a lot more respect for his character. I still don't know the difference between sorcery and witchcraft, <laughs> but uh, I didn't expect the villain, quote unquote, to be. You Scarlet know, Scarlet Witch. Witch. I, I was wondering who would be the villain. There were many theories if you watch some of the uh, trailer mm-hmm. reviews, but. You know, all in all, this movie, I, I liked the action. I liked that one fight scene with the musical notes. I, I kind of, I, I, that was a little different. I kind of liked that uh, that interaction, but, yeah. Any holes? <laughs> <laughs> I will let you cover the holes. All right. No pun. Uh, yeah, all in all, I w- I'm not going to say I was blown away. I'm not going to say it was a flop, but... Um, Pretty decent. It was a pretty decent movie, all in all. Very good. And David? I thought the premise of the film was uh, lackluster. The, literally, the whole premise for the film was like a, uh, a fill-in plot line during a comic run when, they, when the staff is just like wants to go on vacation for a comic book. And it's like, let's come up with a stupid plot. Like, it's great. And the plot was, oh, Scarlet Witch wishes she could be with the boys in another universe, which she could already do on vacation when she dream walks, but I guess she wanted it permanently, I'm assuming. Right. I don't even really know at this point, but I guess that's what she wanted mm-hmm. to do. And uh, it was just a stupid premise. She wanted to be with two sons that she never, ever had. <laughs> and he, the point, the point out he, times. he points it out quite yes, a few does. times. He's like, dude, you, you never had sons mm-hmm. so what are you harping on uh and i just thought it was a stupid premise for such a huge movie like to get all these people killed because she wanted a, a reality that didn't exist even though she's the queen of making different realities and had already done it tenfold in a different way before when she took over a town as stephen strange says Correct. it was just in the WandaVision. weirdest yeah. thing yeah. In <laughs> Wanda, yeah please please watch wandavision before you yeah. Yeah. watch this movie yeah. so you can understand yeah yes yeah. so, um yeah, I think... Uh, and there's more this, involved. This like, solid, at one point, she oh, gets injured. Okay, we, why did she get injured? Nobody knows why she got injured. And then Professor X shows up, and then he just suddenly disappears. There's no reason. There's no... He just vanishes, and then he comes back. But there's supposed to be some dialogue where you see him leave, but there's no reason why he left. And there was one more hole. What was the other hole? Oh, Captain Marvel, the most powerful being in the universe, supposedly, uh, in the in Marvel Universe, and yet... Uh, well, we, uh, don't, we don't know about that. <laughs> The statue, right. incapacitated. Yeah, just like in Endgame when Captain Marvel just gets whizzed away, even though she's the most powerful person in the world. Okay, thank you. Right. Yeah, yeah, those are some good, um, solid, constructive criticisms about it, but I think it was um, pretty fun in, in terms of, uh, you know, silliness. And, and yeah, it's like a comic book, a book. It is like a live comic book where you're just having, you know, different fights, Still different characters. And then, comic. but it is an awesome, a good Sam Raimi, you know, if, if you're a Sam Raimi fan, yes, you're, you're going to see. Sam Raimi fan, you, that's great. There's so many Easter eggs in here that is awesome. There's, um, you know, Bruce Campbell shows up more than once, and uh, he's awesome. 
And and it, you know, it, it, but yeah, it, but in terms of like, yeah, the the plot is pretty pretty flimsy. In terms of you know, the, yeah, the bad the bad guy is uh, you know. I'm almost glad it wasn't a long. Movie. But I'm glad it was only two hours. It, it was still yeah. it was still fun. You know, I still can recommend it. Okay, so let's go around and give numbers now, Mark. I will give this a uh, seven point three. Seven point three out of ten. Seven point three. Seven point three out of ten. Again, you know, the the plot was lackluster. It didn't really. I, I give it because of the action scenes. I laughed at some pretty inappropriate spots. Um, it was a. I thought it was PG thirteen. From what I saw in there, that was not PG thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to look at the rating, but I'm pretty sure that is R. But and for good reasons. Yeah. But the, I think the characters they brought in. That's what got me. Like, oh, okay. Like it was those those Easter eggs where it was like, all oh, right, here we go. Yes, yes. Uh, then it was a letdown. The fight scenes, but I won't get into that. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm gonna give it a seven, and if you're a nine, probably like a you know like a, a, a nine. <laughs> if, if you're nine years yeah. old, it's a nine. <laughs> yeah. Nine years old, it's a nine. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I would say there's a um, uh, seven point eight. I, I, I think because you, you know where 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 it's like where, where it you know lacks in, in story and like you know amazing connection to like all these other parts it, it's still a lot of fun you know it, it, it's um it's an enjoyable movie also i do like that i mean that it does uh it springs of inclusivity inclusivity in terms of race and gender oh, and, and all that stuff and then the, the illuminati showing up with the different actors playing the illuminati and dr no, professor x in the yellow moving thing that's like in the comic book and in the x-men cartoon from the 90s that was pretty awesome mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so anyway, have fun. And this is not really us. This is um, ourselves in another multiverse. (laughs) And we'll talk to you later. But I wanted to add that I do feel like, and this is no knock to Doctor Strange. This is no knock to Benedict. But this movie was more centered around the Scarlet Witch than it was Doctor Strange. I think the reason they made a Doctor Strange movie is because he would have more pull in the box office than the Scarlet Witch would. People saw WandaVision. Reviews were mixed about WandaVision. So I don't think she would have had as much as a pull. And the fact that Doctor Strange was very heavily entangled in the Spideyverse movie, which did wonders at the box office i do feel like that's why it was a doctor strange sequel if you will but i do feel like this movie did focus heavily on the scarlet witch who did phenomenal in the movie you know kudos to miss olsen elizabeth olsen because she is an amazing actor and i think she did a fantastic job as a scarlet witch i liked the scarlet witch in this movie I like all the characters in this movie. Like David said, very diverse cast, inclusive feel for the movie. I will still give it a 7.3. I agree with him on the basis that the plot, I wasn't a big fan. Again, if it's a Doctor Strange movie, but we're focused on the Scarlet Witch and all she wants is to be in the universe for her two boys, my two boys, two boys this, two boys that, great. But this needs to focus more on Doctor Strange and less on the Scarlet Witch then. And I felt like there was a uh, struggle as to who to focus on. Was it Doctor Strange, was it Steven and his relationship, or was it Wanda and her relationship, right? It was that that, that struggle that you saw in the movie a little bit, but ultimately Wanda won uh, with her boys. So, uh, but other than that, again, solid movie. Did not meet the expectations that I had. I had the bar set high, to be honest, but all in all, still a decent movie. That is the end of the podcast. Of course, want to hear your thoughts. Please do so if you're watching this on YouTube down below. Or if you are listening to this in podcast form, there'll be a link in the show notes where you can go ahead and go onto the blog and share your own thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And we are out.